hello friends so in this video we are going to study the next part of the hook joint that is the maximum and minimum speed of the driven shaft okay so in order to find out the maximum and minimum speed of the driven shaft we have to use the equation of ratio of shaft velocity that is omega 1 upon omega is equal to cos alpha divided by 1 minus cos square theta into sin square alpha okay now if i take this omega towards the rhs so then this equation will be omega 1 is equal to omega into cos alpha divided by 1 minus cos square theta into sin square alpha okay so for what purpose we are finding out this maximum and minimum speed of the driven shaft as we have discussed whatever the driving shaft in case of hook joint is rotates with the uniform angular velocity and this driven shaft the driven shaft of the hook joint rotates with the uniform varying speed means what in some for some time it will have the maximum value for some time it will have the minimum value and for some time it will have the moderate value so we have, in order to find out the maximum value of driven shaft and minimum value of driven shaft we have to see the small derivation okay so for that you have to consider this equation okay now first we will find out the maximum speed of the driven shaft okay if you want to find out this omega 1 omega 1 is nothing but what the speed of the driven shaft so we have to find out this maximum speed now this omega 1 will be maximum when this 1 minus cos square theta into sin square alpha that is this denominator term is minimum okay now when this denominator is minimum when this cos square theta is have the maximum value okay because this sin square alpha is not going to change because this is a constant for whole operation okay so in order to find out this minimum denominator you have to consider this cos square theta value okay if this cos square theta value is minimum sorry if this cos square theta value is maximum then in that case whatever this denominator will be minimum and in that case whatever this omega 1 will be maximum okay so for that you have to consider the cos square theta value as a maximum value is equal to 1 as we know that cos square theta value maximum value is 1 and minimum value is 0 so this cos theta this cos theta will be 1 when theta equal to 0 theta equal to 180 and theta equal to 360 degree okay once again i am repeating <coughs> in order to find out this maximum value of omega 1 this denominator must be minimum now this denominator will be minimum when this cos square theta is have the maximum value okay maximum value means what the cos theta will have the value of equal to 1 okay because the sin square alpha is not going to change so that this will remain constant okay so you can put cos square theta equal to 1 in this equation okay now if i put cos square theta equal to 1 in this equation then the equation will be like this way so maximum speed of the driven shaft that is omega 1 max is equal to omega into cos alpha divided by 1 minus sin square alpha so this 1 minus sin square alpha is nothing but what cos square alpha so 1 cos alpha 1 cos alpha will get cancelled therefore omega 1 max will be, will be equal to what? omega upon cos alpha so by using this equation you can find out the maximum speed of the driven shaft okay similarly if you can replace this omega 1 by n1 that is speed so maximum speed will be equal to what? n1 upon n upon cos alpha so this is the relation for angular velocity and this is a relation for the speed okay and keep in mind the speed will be maximum the speed of the driven shaft will be maximum when theta equal to 0 180 degree and 360 degree so at this three point the speed of the driven shaft will be maximum okay now similarly we will find out the minimum speed of the driven shaft okay so same equation we have to use so omega 1 so this omega 1 is equal to what omega into cos alpha upon 1 minus cos square theta into sin square alpha okay we have to find out this value as a minimum value now this omega 1 will be minimum when this denominator is maximum when this denominator is maximum then in that case omega 1 will be minimum that is now if i consider this denominator is maximum now when this denominator is maximum when this cos square theta have the minimum value okay once again i am repeating in order to find out the minimum speed of this driven shaft this denominator must have the maximum value okay 
now this denominator have the maximum value when this cos square theta is equal to 0 okay this denominator will be maximum when this cos square theta is equal to 0 okay then in that case you will get the minimum speed now put this cos square theta equal to 0 in this equation what you will get omega 1 will be equal to cos square theta is 0 means what this term will be 0 so omega 1 minimum will be equal to what 1 minus 0 so it will be 1 so omega 1 minimum will be equal to what omega into cos alpha okay so this will be relation for the angular velocity so you can find out the angular velocity of the driven shaft that is minimum okay similarly the minimum speed of the driven shaft will be what n1 minimum is equal to n into cos alpha okay now keep in mind the speed of the driven shaft is minimum when theta equal to 90 degree and theta equal to 270 degree and its magnitude you can find out by using this equation okay so by using these two equation you can find out the maximum and minimum speed okay so for maximum speed the equation is what omega 1 max is equal to omega upon cos alpha and for minimum speed the speed is uh, equation is what omega into cos alpha okay now next next point is the condition for equal speed of the driving shaft and driven shaft so as already we have discussed whatever the driven shaft <coughs> whatever the driven shaft rotates with uniform non-uniform angular speed so then in that case at some point the speed will be maximum as compared to the driving shaft and at some point the speed will be minimum as compared to the driving shaft and at some point the speed of the driving shaft and driven shaft will be equal okay right so in order to find out the condition for equal speed means what at what angle the speed is equal that is at what angle the speed of the driving shaft and driven shaft is equal that we have to find by using this equation again you have to use the ratio of the speed of the driving and driven shaft so that is nothing but all omega 1 upon omega is equal to cos alpha upon 1 minus cos square theta into sin square alpha now cross multiply this equation so omega is equal to what omega 1 into 1 minus cos square theta into sin square alpha upon cos alpha as we have to find out the condition for equal speed so means what the speed of the driving shaft must be equal to the speed of driven shaft so you can put this omega is equal to omega 1 in this equation okay so this omega omega 1 will get cancelled and this cos alpha will come to the LHS and this RHS term will remain as it is. So you will get this equation cos alpha is equal to 1 minus cos square theta into sin square alpha. Okay or you can write this equation like this way cos square theta into sin square alpha is equal to 1 minus cos, cos alpha. Okay simply take this term to the LHS so this minus term will be positive and take this LHS term to the RHS so this positive term will be negative so you can write this equation cos square theta into sin square alpha is equal to 1 minus cos alpha okay now next step will be what take this sin square alpha to the RHS side so cos square theta is equal to what 1 minus cos alpha divided by sin square alpha so give it as equation number 1 okay now we know that sin square theta is equal to what 1 minus cos square theta sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 therefore sin square theta is equal to what 1 minus cos square theta so we know the value of cos square theta so its value is what 1 minus cos alpha divided by sin square alpha put this value here so you will get 1 minus 1 minus cos alpha divided by sin square alpha so that will be equal to put replace this sin square alpha by 1 minus sin 1 minus cos square alpha again sin square alpha plus cos square alpha is equal to 1 therefore sin square alpha is equal to what 1 minus cos square alpha okay now here you can apply a square minus b square so 1 minus cos square alpha that is a square minus b square is equal to what a plus b a minus b so you can replace this 1 minus cos square alpha by 1 plus cos alpha 1 minus cos alpha so this 1 minus cos alpha 1 minus cos alpha will get cancelled so you will get the equation like this way 1 minus 1 upon 1 plus cos alpha now cross multiply this equation so you will get this equation like this way so that will be equal to cos alpha upon 1 plus cos alpha okay if you cross multiply this 1 1 will get cancelled and cos alpha will remain for denominator so that will be sin square theta is equal to what cos alpha upon 1 plus cos alpha so keep in keep these two value in mind cos square theta is equal to what 1 minus cos alpha upon 
साइन स्क्वायर अल्फा एंड साइन स्क्वायर थीटा इज इक्वल टू व्हाट कॉस अल्फा अपॉन वन प्लस कॉस अल्फा नाउ डिवाइड इक्वेशन टू बाय वन ओके नाउ डिवाइड इक्वेशन टू बाय वन सो इक्वेशन टू इज व्हाट साइन स्क्वायर थीटा इज इक्वल टू कॉस अल्फा अपॉन वन प्लस कॉस अल्फा एंड द इक्वेशन वन इज वॉट कॉस स्क्वेयर थीटा इज इक्वल टू वन माइनस कॉस अल्फा अपॉन साइन स्क्वेयर अल्फा ओके सो इफ यू डिवाइड दिस टू इक्वेशन यू विल गेट दिस टू इक्वेशन नाउ साइन अपॉन कॉस इज नथिंग बट ऑट टैन सो टैन स्क्वेयर थीटा इज इक्वल टू सो दिस कॉस अल्फा इन टू साइन स्क्वेयर अल्फा डिवाइडेड बाय अगेन वन प्लस कॉस अल्फा वन माइनस कॉस अल्फा दैट इज ए प्लस बी ए माइनस बी सो दैट विल बी ए स्क्वेयर माइनस बी स्क्वेयर सो यू कैन रिप्लेस दिस वन प्लस कॉस अल्फा वन माइनस कॉस अल्फा बाय यूजिंग वन माइनस कॉस स्क्वेयर अल्फा ओके सो दिस वन माइनस कॉस स्क्वेयर अल्फा इज नथिंग बट ऑट साइन स्क्वेयर अल्फा सो दिस साइन स्क्वेयर अल्फा साइन स्क्वेयर अल्फा विल गेट कैंसल एंड ऑन आर एच एस ओनली कॉस अल्फा टर्म इज रिमेनिंग सो यू कैन कंसिडर टैन स्क्वेयर थीटा इज इक्वल टू ऑट कॉस अल्फा इफ आई रिमूव दिस स्क्वेयर देन इट विल बी ऑट टैन थीटा इज इक्वल टू प्लस और माइनस अंडर रूट ऑफ कॉस अल्फा ओके नाउ इफ आई कंसिडर द इक्वल कंडीशन ऑफ इक्वल स्पीड सो इट्स कंडीशन इज वॉट टैन थीटा इज इक्वल टू प्लस माइनस अंडर रूट ऑफ कॉस अल्फा सो द वैल्यू ऑफ थीटा now there will be the four value at which the speed of the driving shaft and driven shaft will be equal in which out of that four value the plus sign corresponds to the two value of theta and minus sign corresponds to the two value of equal speed of the theta okay so you can get from this equation you can get the four value of the theta at which the speed is equal okay <coughs> now the next point the polar diagram that is silent features of the speed of the driven shaft okay so now in this case whatever this circle whatever this circle represent the speed of the driving shaft as the driving shaft rotates with uniform angular velocity so we have represented it by circle and whatever the driven shaft rotates it rotates with non uniform angular velocity so we have represented it with ellipse right now we have to see at which point the speed is maximum at which point the speed is minimum already we have seen the equation okay in case of maximum speed okay we have seen that the speed is maximum when theta equal to 0 and theta equal to 180 degree means what at point 1 and at point 2 the speed of the driven shaft is maximum so here it is represent omega 1 max so omega 1 max will be will be max omega 1 will be maximum at point 2 and at point 1 when theta equal to 0 so whatever the angle of this one point will be 0 angle of two point will be again angle of two point will be again angle of two point will be again 0 similarly you have to consider the minimum speed so speed is minimum when theta equal to 90 degree and theta equal to 270 270 degree so this 3 and 4 represent the minimum speed of the driven shaft okay now whatever this point 5 6 7 8 so these are the point at which the speed of the driving shaft and driven shaft are equal already we have discussed at four point during one rotation of the driving shaft at four point the speed of the driven shaft and driver shaft will be equal so these are the eight point these are the eight point are in a one rotation of the driving shaft in one rotation of the driving shaft at two point the speed will be maximum at two point the speed will be minimum and at four point the speed will be equal okay so this is a polar diagram of the speed of the driven shaft okay hope you understand this now next point <coughs> is the maximum fluctuation of speed okay for the maximum fluctuation fluctuation is nothing but what it is the difference between the maximum speed and minimum speed so we know maximum speed is nothing but what omega max is equal to omega 1 max is equal to omega upon cos alpha minimum speed is nothing but what omega into cos alpha so maximum fluctuation is nothing but what it is the difference between the maximum speed and minimum speed so q is nothing but what maximum fluctuation so that will be equal to what omega 1 max minus omega 1 minimum put or put the value of omega 1 max omega 1 minimum omega 1 upon omega upon cos alpha minus omega into cos alpha okay take omega common so you will get 1 minus cos alpha minus cos alpha so cross multiply this you will get 1 minus cos square alpha upon 
cos alpha. So 1 minus cos square alpha is nothing but odd sine square alpha. Now if I consider one sine from this sine square alpha, so sine upon cos, so that will be tan and one sine remaining that is nothing but odd sine alpha. Okay, so Q is equal to what? Omega into tan alpha into sine alpha. Now if I consider the alpha is very small angle, therefore you can put cos alpha is equal to 1 and sine alpha is equal to alpha. Okay, so you will get this tan alpha will be equal to alpha and sine alpha will be equal to alpha. Okay, because sin, tan is nothing but odd sine upon cos. So sine value is alpha and cos value is 1. So tan alpha will be equal to what? Alpha. And value of sine alpha is what? Alpha. So you can consider tan alpha into sine alpha as a alpha square. So maximum fluctuation of speed will be equal to what? Omega into alpha square. So by using this equation, you can find out the difference between the maximum speed and minimum speed. Okay. Now next next point is a double hook joint okay so already we have discussed in case of single hook joint whatever the velocity of the driven shaft is not constant but it varies from the maximum and it varies between the maximum speed and minimum speed so in order to overcome this at disadvantage so in order to have the constant velocity ratio of the driving shaft and driven shaft an intermediate shaft with hook joint at each end is huge so now if i consider this intermediate shaft and one end so that will be the first hook joint and at another end that will be the second hook joint so this types of joint is called as the double hook joint okay so in order to have the constant angular velocity ratio you can use this double hook joint okay now we will see how this how this joint will give the uniform angular velocity okay now if i consider this a as a driving shaft b as an intermediate shaft c as a driving shaft okay sorry see as again it is a driven shaft or driving shaft okay now consider the driving intermediate and driven shafts rotates by an angle theta phi and gamma gamma so from this position you can consider for shaft a and b consider the shaft a and b so relation will be what tan theta is equal to tan phi into cos alpha so this relation we have seen in the first video in in the point that is ratio of shaft velocity that is tan theta is equal to tan phi into cos alpha similarly if you consider the shaft b and c so equation is what tan gamma is equal to tan phi into cos alpha you have to consider this angular positions okay from equation 1 and 2 whatever the rhs is same then whatever the lhs will be same that is theta will be equal to gamma as the theta is equal to gamma so this theta is nothing but what angle corresponds to driving shaft and this gamma is corresponds to what the angle corresponds to the driven shaft that is shaft c so you can consider the angular velocity of a so that will be equal to angular velocity of c okay so this shows that the whatever the speed of the driving shaft and driven shaft is constant so in other so in other words you can consider whatever this joint will give the <coughs> ratio of the velocity is equal to unity okay if but the condition is what the axis of the driving shaft and driven shaft must be in a same plane and the driving shaft and driven shaft makes an equal angle with the intermediate shaft so by using this condition you can find you can get the constant angular velocity ratio by using this double hook joint okay hope you have understand this video and you can subscribe my channel for the more videos which are related to the theory of machine okay thank you